Ever since the Vivo V27 Pro's review unit came to office, I've been really interested to check out how its camera stacks up against the OnePlus 11R. Now, both these phones are priced under Rs. 40,000 with the V27 Pro being slightly more affordable, especially with the extra bank offers. Anyway, let's find out which one of these two phones, one aimed at camera, one aimed at performance, is better for camera performance. If you're here for the first time, I'm Ershad, you're watching Track and Tech English, let the battle begin. First things first, the OnePlus 11R has the Sony IMX 890 sensor for the primary camera, whereas the Vivo has, uh, you know, the Sony IMX 766V, which is a custom sensor. Now, the secondary and the tertiary cameras on both is an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro. However, the selfie camera on the V27 Pro is a larger resolution, 15 megapixel one, which of course takes pixel bent selfies. And, uh, you know, in comparison, you get the 16 MP selfie camera on the OnePlus 11R. Now that the specs are out of the way, let's get down to the pictures. But before that, I love doing these camera tests for you so that you can pick out the best camera phone in any price category so i'd love your support so if you can hit that subscribe button that'd be great and also share this video with friends and family who want to choose between these two phones for camera performance now when it comes to capturing details and fine textures i was really surprised at how good the v27 pros imx 766v was at capturing it compared to the imx 890 inside the 11r because this is a far superior sensor you can see sharp textures on both samples but vivo's algorithm sharpens slightly more to keep up with the natural details details of the 11R. You can see how that affects the glossy reflections on the shiny tank of the Kawasaki Ninja. Vivo sharpening tends to make it look slightly artificial compared to the more natural detailed retrieval of the IMX 890. But you know what? I'm just nitpicking here. I've heard that most people don't zoom into pictures. But then again, we look for technical details. That's our job. Now coming to color reproduction, on the V27 Pro, you get two color options. One is boosted and one is natural. Now if you followed my work, you know that I prefer natural colors, but I know for a fact that a lot of folks also prefer boosted colors. Now, when you compare the natural color Vivo shot against the OnePlus 11R, you can see clearly that the red of the car, the green of the leaf, the blues in the background and the browns in the background are slightly, you know, boosted on the 11R sample, which uh, of course makes it look slightly more attractive. But then again, if you want a more attractive picture from the V27 Pro, you can very well use the boosted color option, right? It's a very good thing that Vivo is actually giving you the option to pick the color signs of your choice. Now, for somebody who prefers natural colors like me, they would go for that. Somebody who wants boosted colors can pick the boosted one. And when you look at the HDR samples, you will notice that Vivo's algorithm is much better at controlling the highlights on the rear and also bringing out more details from the shadows. And all this while making the picture look very natural. In fact, when you're shooting friends and family against a very strong backlight, you will notice that OnePlus's HDR algorithm screws up really badly. In a bid to make the faces look brighter, there's a lot of bloom around the face and the picture looks very unnatural. I'll really pick Vivo here. And technically, 11 hours HDR processing is kind of weak. Now, talking about capturing friends and family, if you shoot them in good lighting, OnePlus still tends to brighten faces unnaturally. The exposure is just perfect on Vivo. But both the phones tend to get the skin tones wrong. Where OnePlus goes for a fairer look, Vivo finds it difficult to control the reds on the skin, which is also true for selfies, which I'll come to in a bit. However, if you're looking for sharper details and textures, I think OnePlus does a better job than Vivo. Now, moving on to portraits, I like Vivo's algorithm for offering better depth rendition and no unnecessary face brightening like, you know, 11R does. Vivo does go overboard with the kind of lighting and filters and you know kind of tuning that you can do with the portrait mode including a special wedding photography mode. Now obviously these are added advantages I'm not somebody who uses those but in the hands of the right photographer like Joseph Radik from Pixel Village you can see the kind of you know pictures that you can get with it. Now finally coming to low light shots Vivo's night mode algorithm and multi-stack processing offers a brighter shot which is very evident. Moreover it offers sharper details because the noise compression algorithm doesn't soften it out like the OnePlus 11R does. In a bit to reduce the noise levels, 11R's algorithm crushes the details too much. Especially in the final set of samples, you can see how the 11R crushes the shadows. By the way, I did notice one thing is that OnePlus doesn't open the shutter for as long as Vivo does when using the night mode, which is possibly why Vivo gets brighter shots. But then again, the night mode is supposed to do that and the 11R is not doing it. Now, even for the ultra wide angle camera, Vivo uses an eight megapixel camera, which is of better quality and it offers a well-tuned algorithm too. In this sample set, you can see that Vivo offers more details and a far superior dynamic range as well. In fact, it also does a very good job of maintaining color science consistency with the primary camera. The color of the sky and the building are not properly matched in the 11 hours comparison, if you notice carefully. But OnePlus does make a comeback with low light ultra wide shots where you get brighter exposures and cleaner textures as well. In fact, even the noise levels are lower, but overall, if you look at it, I would still pick the V27 Pro's ultra wide angle camera as my camera of choice. Now, while you do get a 2 MP macro camera on both the phones, and I'm not a fan of 2MP macro cameras, I still think 
that Vivos does it slightly better. You get a sharper macro shot plus a natural bokeh drop off that you get looks kind of nice. Now considering the 50MP selfie camera that Vivo has, I expected it to beat the OnePlus 11R selfie camera very easily, but that's not really the case. Whether you look at the facial tones or details, both are evenly matched. I really cannot pick one to be superior compared to the other. In fact, the edge cutout in portrait selfies is slightly better on OnePlus. But where Vivo actually takes the lead is in HDR selfies. HDR selfies are more natural looking in Vivo compared to OnePlus, which struggles with bloom and overexposing the face once again. But if you want a brighter face, of course, you will go with the 11R, but I think the right looking HDR picture is more important. Now, if you're looking for a bright looking selfie against the light, then you will pick the 11R. But then again, I think the V27 Pro is technically more proficient. Coming to low light selfies, again, the OnePlus 11R takes the lead. The V27 Pro selfie has some green chromatic aberration around the shadows, which doesn't look very good. Now you can shoot up to 4K 60fps videos using both the phone's primary camera, but OnePlus is better than Vivo out here. You get stabilization at the highest 4K 60fps option on the 11R, you don't get it on the V27 Pro. Plus you get a higher bitrate video, so more details on the 11R and better sound quality too. However, dynamic range performance is equally good on both. This is a 4K 60fps video recording using the OnePlus 11R. This is a 4K 60fps video recording using the OnePlus 11R. Now you do get standard stabilization at 4K 30fps on the V27 Pro, but the 11R stabilization is still better. Even the ultra stable footage at 1080p 60fps is better optimized on the 11R despite it being over sharp. In comparison, V27 Pro is very soft. However, Vivo does make a comeback with better low light video recording. The noise control is better and it doesn't hunt for focus as much as the 11R does. And finally, in front camera video recording, the V27 Pro offers 4K 60fps video recording from the front camera, where OnePlus stops out at 1080p 30fps. But at 4K 60fps, 4K 30fps and 1080p 60fps, you do not get stabilization. You get stabilization only at 1080p 30fps on the V27 Pro. But when you compare the 1080p 30fps footage from both the phones using the front camera, the V27 Pro is still better. You get great great sound quality, you get superb dynamic range performance and far more details as well. So yeah, that 50MP camera comes in handy when you want to shoot videos using the front camera, which is what Vivo is doing really well with the V27 Pro. So yeah, that 50MP camera comes in handy when you want to shoot videos using the front camera, which is what Vivo is doing really well with the V27 Pro. Now, after testing the cameras on both these phones, I have some clarity. No pun intended here. So Vivo V27 Pro's primary camera, ultra wide angle camera and macro camera performance is better than the 11R overall. I did expect the V27 Pro to beat the 11R in selfie camera performance, but that's not really the case. The 11R actually matches up. In fact, sometimes even beats it, especially in low light performance. But the V27 Pro selfie camera is definitely useful for better quality video recording, which is not possible on the 11R. However, when you're talking about rear camera video recording using the primary camera, then I think, uh, you know, the 11R does a better job. So if you compare all the parameters v27 pro is overall the better camera phone compared to the 11r what do you guys think do you have any problem with the assessment do you have any differing opinions let me know in the comment section below that's it from me for now i'll see you guys in the next one until then keep tracking and stay safe